So why are so many companies leaving the cloud today? The reasons may surprise you. Let's talk about it. Yeah. So if you've been paying attention, there's been an awful lot of uh, coverage uh, around companies who are exiting the cloud uh, in major companies in some instances, mostly smaller companies who are finding that they're getting better, better value from leveraging non-cloud resources. And uh, so they're moving from their cloud deployments back into their on-premise deployments or typically to a colo provider or an MSP provider. Um, probably the most... Uh, the, the one that's getting the most attention is uh, uh, David Hansen, who uh, wrote a um, article called The Big Cloud Exit FAQ, uh, which I urge you to read. And by the way, it's linked, it's linked down below. And he talks about the journeys and getting into the real prices and reasons in why he made the decision to exit the cloud for his particular company. And th the patterns are very much the same. So we're finding that... Um, the cost of hardware has fallen a tremendous amount in the last 10 years, as you can see on your screen. And that's kind of blown a hole in the business case for cloud computing, because in many instances, as you may remember, back in 2010, 2012, people were moving into cloud because of the cost advantages, CapEx versus OpEx, things like that. So in other words, it was sold as something that's going to be cheaper. And here we are in 2024, the price of traditional hard drive storage uh, servers, things you would normally buy within a data center are falling like crazy, almost a 45 degree angle. And the price of cloud pretty much remaining the same, if not rising in, in some instances. So there's that uh, business case that seems to be stressed by the fact that in many instances, I can run my workloads and store my data within my own data center or a data center that I rent. Um, and it's gonna be cheaper long-term than paying the cloud costs. And there's reasons why you do that. So cost really kind of is the main motivator that's driving a lot of people off the cloud. It doesn't, it doesn't seem to be a failure of cloud. They're not running into issues with outages and service levels and all those sorts of things. They just realize that their workloads that are running on the cloud are a lot more expensive than they thought they would be. And then doing the math and the look at looking at them as they're going to run in, on premise and how much you're gonna pay for that. And that becomes a business case that's hard to ignore. So it's not pushing back against cloud or cloud failing them. It's the ability to find the most optimized platform to run their workloads and to store their data. And in some instances, that's going to be on premise. So some people are pushing back on me as I'm writing and speaking on this topic and say, hey, Lenticum, you're supposed to be a cloud advocate. <laughs> you know, what are you doing talking about people leaving cloud? Never was a cloud advocate. I'm an architect, which means I'm. Uh, I'm going to be motivated to find the most optimized platforms to run the workloads and systems that I'm building. And if that's on premise, that's fine. If that's on an edge-based system, that's fine. If that's on cloud, that's fine. Uh, so everything has to be on the table. So these are kind of natural transitions that are being made by companies that are looking out for their own investors, which is why companies exist. So cost is the main motivator, which is driving people off of cloud if they are moving off of cloud. The second reason would be failed migrations. Uh, in many instances, and I saw this a great deal during the pandemic, people were moving massive amounts of workloads, uh, applications and data sets into the cloud, and were doing so without any refactoring or modernization. So they're just picking it up, basically classic lift and shift, pull, pulling it off their traditional platforms that sit on premise and putting it on cloud-based platforms, normally platform analogs and got them running and uh, everything was hunky-dory until the bill came in. In 2022, we saw a massive uh, amount of uh, companies who were complaining about their cloud bills that, you know, as I write about in my book, were pretty much 2.5 times what they thought they were going to be. And those are really kind of self-inflicted wounds. The reason is, is that they didn't modernize the applications. They weren't taking advantage of some of the optimization and utilization uh, systems that the cloud provides because they didn't rewrite any of the stuff to exist on the cloud, weren't taking uh, advantage of native security and governance and all these sorts of things. And therefore, it was a very inefficient application on-premise, became a very inefficient application in the cloud. 
and ended up costing a lot of money because the cloud is a utility, very much like if you leave your, you know, leave your electronics onto your house, you're going to get a big bill from the electric company. Cloud's no different. So in other words, it's going to uh, make you pay for the resources that you use. And since these applications were hugely inefficient, uh, then they were burning too many resources. So we are seeing repatriation uh, of these workloads and moving back to the on-premise systems, mainly because they're looking at the cost of refactoring and modernizing these systems as they sit in the cloud to make them efficient. In other words, to make them use the cloud in more efficient ways to become cheaper to run. And it's uh, outweighing their budget. And so they're just saying, well, we'll just take them, put them back on premise. We're going to be able to run them cheaper. And that's going to be the fix for now. I guess they're going to have to figure something out at some point. But in most, a lot of the repatriation cases, I see that being the case. In other words, things should never have been a move to the cloud that weren't fixed and optimized for the cloud. Realize they're too expensive to run, pulling them back on premise. Finally, the case would be diminishing need for the cloud. And I'll give you a scenario here. You're a startup, uh, you don't have a lot of cash, and you're going to leverage cloud systems as the place to run, say, your on demand tools for instance, and which is fine and dandy uh, when you're small and only have a few hundred users, but as you grow to 10,000 users and 20,000 users, you get to be a much larger operation. So suddenly your cloud bill is very expensive. And this, by the way, I think is the case with Hansen as well, if you read his FAQ. Uh, and you realize that you're just doing the same thing over and over again. You're storing massive amounts of data. You're, you're running different the same patterns at scale. So it's not like an enterprise where we're running different applications and different workloads where the cloud can accommodate those things. It's very convenient to do because we can configure and reconfigure a huge ecosystem of technology that they have available. And that's really the power of the cloud. However, in certain situations, if I'm running a SaaS business, for instance, um, the way I do storage and the way I do compute is going to be the same, and my ability to scale it up is really all I need to do. And so therefore, if we're going from, say, a $100,000 cloud bill uh, year one to a $10 million cloud bill year five, then we're looking at other alternatives and places where we can run that system. In many instances, uh, as I mentioned, with uh, with the cost of hardware, the, the on-premise systems are going to be a cheaper al alternative. And so, case of Hanson, I think he went this way. And so, a lot of companies that are doing similar patterns on the cloud just needed to scale. Uh, they don't view the cloud as the best deal, and that's probably correct. And therefore, looking at better, less expensive ways to run their workloads, and then pulling them back on premise. Um, we saw this over the last five years, by the way. We saw lots of companies that were providing storage as a service and where they were repeating the same patterns over and over again, very homogenous in how they deployed their systems. Uh, they realized that the commoditization of the hardware they were using was really how they should be thinking and therefore looking at saving some money and then doing the repatriation or even do a partial repatriation. In other words, repatriating some workloads and data sets uh, uh, from the cloud back to on-premise and running a hybrid scenario. So what does this all mean? Well, I think it's a, it's a good trend because what we're doing is we're being very open and honest about the viability of these platforms longer terms, and we're making right-sizing decisions in terms of moving application workloads and data sets to the platforms where they're gonna be uh, best optimized. So I think it's gonna be a fine thing for uh, organizations to go through this exercise. I don't think it's pushing back on cloud. I think it's pushing back on, on the way the state of cost these days. And there's lots of good reasons to leverage cloud-based systems, as I mentioned uh, a minute ago. Uh, if you're doing a vast array of things, which enterprises typically do, you're building applications using AI, using different databases, things like that, the cloud's going to be the most convenient way to do that and probably the most cost-effective way to do that. But again, you have to look at your particular use cases. And so this is going to be an ongoing discussion probably for the next few years. And I think people are, are getting a little emotional about this in some instances because they, they feel there's, a, there's an attachment to moving toward the trend, in this case, cloud computing. And that's great to have those discussions. I think it's just a viable architectural option that we're, we're exercising here. It's not a religious or hype-driven thing. Uh, we're making business decisions, which I think is what architects need to do. Uh, people who are running IT and corporations need to do. So I think it's perfectly fine. 
Well, that's going to do it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, check out my book. Check out uh, my uh, blog. Um, check out the other videos here because I'm looking forward to having more discussions with you about cloud computing. You guys take care.